Soil testing really does not need to be scary or complicated. Let me show you how to do it. First thing we are going to need is a clean bucket. So just wash that out in the sink. Make sure you have a clean bucket to put your soil samples in. And then grab a couple quart size Ziploc bags. I'm using Waypoint Labs. They have locations across the country. There happens to be one about an hour away from me. So I'm using this because I get my results back quickly and it's easy to send there with professional results. Now here's where it's nice to have this piece of equipment right here. This is a soil probe. I use this throughout my yard many times during the season to grab samples check on moisture levels, do a lot of things. So it is a bit of an investment, but I highly recommend buying one of these if you plan on getting into lawn stuff long term. You're going to use it, and I promise you it's an awesome tool to have. If you don't have one of these, you can take a slice out of your soil, maybe with a garden spade or a small kind of tool like that. That works, but I wanna take 10 to 15 samples of soil and then mix them all together and get one sample to send in out of all of those samples. That way we have results from across the yard and not just one one spot of the yard. So you can see why this soil probe is an important tool to have because it's so much easier to take 10 to 15 samples. The instructions also say to go down to a depth of four to six inches with your core. So I make a mark on my soil probe of six inches. That way when I'm out in the yard, I can grab my sample and know I have the correct depth. Also don't forget before you start touching your soil to wear some gloves. I love these nitrile gloves here that I've been using. Anytime I spray or anytime I do anything in the yard that requires me to have gloves on, these things are awesome. This is just to prevent anything that's on your hands from going into your soil sample. Just make sure everything's clean and wear a pair of gloves. Next thing is you need 10 to 15 samples throughout your yard in kind of a zigzag pattern. This just makes it so that you're getting a good sample size. You're not taking one small spot of your yard and just sampling that soil. You're taking multiple samples and mixing them together. That will give you a better idea of results throughout your entire yard. Now for me, I like to do a sample in the backyard and one in the front yard separately because I'm doing low cut turf in the front and not as low cut turf in the back and I treat things differently. So I like to see what's happening in various zones. You would not need to do this if you were looking at your yard as one single whole piece. So keep that in mind. Take 10 to 15 samples throughout the whole yard, front, back, side, all that. Now you're going to take these samples, remove the excess thatch off the top or any of the grass and the roots as much as possible. And then you're going to place these into your bucket. Now for me, I notice that I have a lot of roots up towards the top of my core. So I usually try to grab the bottom pieces. I'm realizing over time that I should probably try to grab more of that closer to the soil as well and get rid of the roots as much as possible to give me an accurate sample. But what I've been doing recently has been at least consistent the last couple years. But for you, grab as much of that core as possible without any of the grass, thatch, or any of the grass roots in there. I place these in my bucket. I start to break up the cores as much as possible, clean out the debris, shake this all around, and then I'm ready to take a couple scoops of that and put it into my Ziploc bag. There's recommendations here from Waypoint on how much you should give them. I have a little cup here. I don't really remember where I found it exactly, but I usually take five or six scoops of this, put it into the Ziploc bag, close that up, seal it, and then on the front also write your name and your sample ID. So your sample ID is going to be whatever you want to make it. It has to be six characters or less. So for me, I have a backyard and a front yard, so I just name those accordingly. That way I know when I get my results back which one was the back and which one was the front. Here you print out the form fill it out. It's very simple. Just put your name and information on there. Put your sample IDs, whatever you create them to be, in the section there. I'm doing the S3M test to give me all the results throughout my yard, the macronutrients, the micronutrients, organic matter. Pretty much a good picture of everything that I want to know going on in the soil. Then also on your form, depending on your location, it will have the address on there on where to send this. I seal them up. I put them in a package. I put this paperwork in there that says what kind of tests I want done and all of my information. And then I send it to them. And you should have some results fairly quickly from them. From my experience, even though I am really close to location here in Iowa, I've had results really quickly. And I've heard from other people around the country that results are fairly quick as well. Now, the question is, what do you do for payment? So originally when I sent this in, I didn't see any payment information. I wasn't sure what to do the first time I sent to Waypoint. So I called them. They said, yep, just set up an account with us. It's really easy. Set up my account. They took my credit card information. And now anytime I send a sample to them, I don't have to call them again. And they already have my information. They have an account set up for me. So when I send it in now, they just run the samples, they charge my credit card, and they send the results back to me by email. For the most part, reading your soil test, what I like about this is it gives you some graphs and some visual things that will show you what's going on. A lot of these lab type tests will just give you numbers and that's where it gets complicated for homeowners. But I think this is pretty easy to see here. The main thing that you wanna look at right away
away is your pH, and mine is slightly above seven. We would like a range between six to seven, hopefully. Don't freak out about any of your levels being low or a little high. So the reason that we're doing this is over time, we can add nutrients back to the yard in a more targeted way. If you don't have any clue what you need and you're just applying things, then you either are wasting some of them or as was the case with me, I found out that last year I had an overabundance of phosphorus. So in this case, I don't really want to add a lot more phosphorus to my yard because that's probably hindering some of the other nutrients from actually being used. So if I were to just keep using phosphorus, throwing it down, then I'm not only wasting it, but it's probably actually taking away from the other nutrients that I want my yard to receive. These are the reasons why I like soil testing, why it doesn't need to be scary. So check your pH. It's going to give you some recommendations if you're below six, that's going to be where you would use lime. If you're above seven, then that is where things are more difficult to bring it down, but you wanna focus your fertilizers on a source like ammonium sulfate, or I will be using some elemental sulfur this year as well, at least that's my plan, to put onto the yard to start to bring that pH down if possible. My good friend John Perry has a video that explains a lot about reading your soil test, and I think that would be beneficial to watch, so I'll link that right here. Again, just look at your nutrient levels and don't freak out about anything but keep in mind that if you see something that's low, you can target adding more of that with fertilizers this year. Micronutrients, if some of those are low, you could use some micronutrient boosters this year to also try to target some of that stuff. Check out some more videos here. I can feel the season coming and there's more content coming as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.